it will only do that if all the switches are in the right position so that it's being told what it needs to know. And as you can see, there are a lot of switches to get in the right position. You can, of course, fly the LEM yourself if you want to using these two controls. Then the main displays, the computer, which way up are you, how much fuel have you got left, and the one everybody wants to see light up very gently, that one, the lunar contact light. As you come in over 500 feet, the job is to find somewhere smooth to set down and land on. The commander has two minutes to do that before he runs out of fuel. So he is looking out of the window as if his life depended on it, which it does. And the lunar module pilot is telling him all he needs to know from that display there, which says you're going forward or sideways at a certain number of feet per second, and this display here that says you're going up or down at so many feet per second. So he's calling out things like 200 feet, forward at 8, down at 5. The name of the game, of course, is to land on the surface of the moon going forward or sideways at naught and downwards at a very small number. Looks easy. But as we watch the landing of Apollo 11, remember what I said about getting the switches in the right position. 50 down at 2 and a half. 19 forward. 3 and a half down. 220 feet. 13 forward. 11 forward coming down nicely. 200 feet. Four and a half down. Five and a half down. Let's just uh, stop the landing there for a minute while I tell you about all the other people who were doing it too. The people the crew were calling Houston. There were about 70 of them and they were split into four shifts. Their average age was under 30 and this was their office. The Mission Operations Control Room. Here's what everybody did. Guido, the Guidance and Navigation Officer. Remember him, you'll be meeting one. Fido, every spacecraft maneuver was his responsibility. Retro, bringing them back safely to Earth. Here, the flight surgeon. Here, the capsule communicator, the astronaut in constant contact with the crew. And over here, two sets of engineers. One set watching all the systems on board the command module, the other watching all the systems on board the lunar module, and everybody watching very carefully. Up here, the hot seat. The flight director. The boss. Now, while all you and I heard during the mission was the capsule communicator talking to the crew, in here, Everybody was talking to everybody else on their own internal communications network called the Flight Director's Loop. Listen to what the landing was like on that. Got us locked up there, telecom. Okay, it's just real weak flight. Okay, how are you looking? All your systems go? That's a firm flight. How about you, Control? We look good. Guidance, you have any angle systems? Fido, how about you? We're going to use them before we are right. 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 No right. Problem. right. The flight director in charge, whose voice you heard there, was Gene Krantz. We came on board about 8 o'clock in the morning of July 20th. And uh, it was sort of like you were uh, all set up for a big game. Uh, I think everyone had the sweaty palms. They were sort of nervous. We checked in with the other controllers uh, to more or less get the status of the uh, overall spacecraft. And it looked like uh, everything was going great for us. And as soon as the spacecraft came over, the first thing that uh, we noted was that our communications were very ratty. They were poor. They, they were dropping in and out. And it seemed that it took that initial problem to sort of mobilize the team to more or less the frame of mind, hey, this is just another training exercise. We got problems. That's what we're trained to work on. So let's have at it. This is the guidance officer I said you'd meet, Steve Bales. He was monitoring navigation and therefore any navigational involvement on the part of Apollo's computer. Unfortunately, we had started the limb guidance computer off with a navigational error. It was approximately 14 miles an hour. What that means is the guidance computer thinks that it is going toward the moon 14 miles an hour slower than it really is. The only thing that could save the situation was an update from the landing radar, telling the onboard computer that it was wrong. The astronauts could do nothing to help. Flight looks good. Roger. 10%. Roger. 2000. Good lock on. At that point, I started to relax a little bit because the worst problem I thought we could ever have in a landing was a navigation problem. Just 20 seconds after we had started to correct the state vector error, first program alarm occurred. 12, 1202 alarm. Flight retro. Go retro. Throttle down. 6 plus 2. Give us a reading on the 1202 program five. alarm. That means the computer was too overloaded to do everything it was supposed to. Bales had 20 seconds. If in that time the computer stopped navigating, or there was one more alarm, he'd have to cancel the landing immediately. We're, we're going that flight. We're going that alarm. 
Roger, we got you. We're it's going at alarm. Roger. 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 Scared absolutely to death, but I was not as scared during the alarms as I was but when we started the landing. What we had to do is to make sure that if for any reason we would have an accident during the actual landing phase, that we had the information to tell us why the accident occurred. So the communications and, in fact, the telemetry were extremely important. What you're actually saying is that if people died, you had to know why. We have to know why. That is, that is absolutely correct. Okay, we still got landing radar guidance. Confirm. Okay, is it converged? It's beautiful. Is it converged? Yes. Okay. Okay, all flight controllers, go now, go for landing. Retro. Go. Fido. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. And go. Uh, Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Copy. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle, Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. 1201 alarm. Same guys. type, we're go flight. Okay, we're, go. we're go. Same type, we're go. That's the shadow up there. One of the major problems caused by the five computer emergencies during descent was that the crew were able to look out and see where they were only in the last few minutes. So they weren't exactly happy. We were uh, certainly aware of some of the problems. We knew we had a tight fuel budget. Uh, we didn't know the computer was going to act up on us as it did. The alarms had occurred because a rendezvous radar switch had been left on, flooding the computer with an overload of data it didn't even need during the landing. A switch was in a place that we told the crew to put it. We had not been super smart. If we'd have been super smart in the two or three months before the landing and have thought about this circuit and have thought about what the possible implications might be, then we'd have caught it. Forward. At 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down. Straight shadow. Stand Four forward. forward. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30. 30. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. They had 30 seconds of fuel left. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Boat control, both auto, descent, engine command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. We've had shut down. We copy you down, Eagle. Okay, everybody, uh, T1, stand by for T1. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, twang, Tranquility. We copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot.